Oh my gosh. You pulled this out. My new girlfriend. Never been with a guy who wasn't circumcised. Okay, they've seen enough. Uh... <laughs> Hello, I'm Randall Park, and Esquire has asked me to watch some clips of my career and tell you a bit about what we're seeing. I really hate watching myself, but let's do this. Who are you? I'm Jim. We've been working together for 12 years. <laughs> we're Joe Dwight. Well, that was from the uh, infamous Asian Jim uh, cold open. I knew the scene beforehand. I knew how funny it was and how great it was and I was just like, oh my god, I get to like pretend to be Jim. I was just like stoked that number one, I get to be on the show and number two, the scene was like super funny. But I never expected it to become a bigger thing than what it was. But at least I could say I was on The Office. Cut to many years later, I'm walking down the street and somebody yells, Asian Jim out of their car. I'm like, is this some sort of hate crime? What's going on? And it turned out that this clip, this one scene from The Office had gone viral all over the internet and it's kind of uh, cemented me as a way bigger part of The Office than it actually was because it was just a scene. But it's great because, you know, a lot of people have seen this scene and they regard it as one of the great cold opens of The Office, which is like an honor to be a part of. And, uh, you know, it's one of the uh, examples of the internet doing some good. Your school has rules, right? Like, you can't draw on the walls. Well, your daddy went to Germany and drew on the walls with Captain America. So this clip is from my first appearance as Jimmy Woo in the Marvel Universe. The director Peyton Reed wanted to meet with me. He was thinking of me for this role of Jimmy Woo. I remember just thinking, oh my God, this is gonna be great. I get to be in a Marvel movie and also to act with Paul Rudd who is one of my all-time favorites. It just all seemed like too good to be true, you know? So it, when those things happen, I always think like, oh, it's great, thank you for thinking of me, but it's not gonna come together because life doesn't work like that. But then uh, next thing I knew, I got the call, they want you on set. And I was just like, oh my God, I, okay, cool. I get to be in a Marvel movie and I get to play this character that was also in the comic books. And then I thought that would be it, you know? As with most things in my career, I think it's like, you know, one and done. And and then next thing I knew, I got a call to be in another Marvel uh, project as Jimmy Woo in WandaVision. It's just been so great. The fan reaction to this character has just been so uh, heartening and any opportunity to, to be in the Marvel Universe. If they want Jimmy Woo back, I'm there. Who's doing the see, Wanda? Wanda, can you hear me? Who is that? Wanda. So this is the aforementioned uh, WandaVision. I remember going to uh, Marvel Studios and meeting with Jack Schaefer, who's the head writer, creator of the show. She was in this conference room and she had like the whole show on all the walls basically mapped out. And I was just like, that's crazy. Not what I was expecting, just so out of the box. And my first thought was, they're letting you do this? You're really gonna start the first two episodes as just like these old sitcoms? I think originally this was supposed to go later. It wasn't supposed to be the first series of the Marvel shows on Disney Plus, but for some reason it became the first one. So there was, you know, a lot of pressure on the show to like have an impact and it had a huge impact. I think because of all the risks that it took, just to see something so different, such a bold swing. And I think we uh, knocked it out the park. Sore throat? Oh my gosh. You pulled this out. My new girlfriend, never been with a guy who wasn't circumcised. Okay, I've seen enough. Uh, <laughs> This was uh, fairly early in my career. At the time, I was just auditioning a ton and not booking a lot. That's just the reality for a working actor. You just audition a ton. They'll send you auditions if they think you're right for the part. And I'm reading these sides and I'm like, okay, this is a guy who tried to circumcise himself. And my first thought was, why did they think of me? What about me says that I'm right for this role? So I'm like, all right, I, I don't think I'm the guy, but I go in and audition. Immediately they're like, you're the guy. And I'm like, why? So right after this one, I booked a commercial and it was a national commercial, but it was for KY Jelly. And I remember like, what about me is saying 
that I'm like the one for these roles. It was nice to have a really weird scene in a very popular show. I mean, it didn't do much for my dating life. Okay, well, do you have any idea how you may have gotten this rash? You know, the only thing I can think of is I've been seeing this Okay, I think we're good. I don't know what it is about my career, especially during these days. They weren't like the easiest roles to share with my family. And at the time, I wanted nothing more than their approval. And the great thing about this show is it was, you know, there was no script. You just kind of get thrown in there and you just play the part. And I remember going in, oh, you're gonna be a doctor. Great, Larry's doctor. And I was like, oh, this is that's gonna be amazing. And yeah, he's gonna have a rash. And I was like, oh, how funny. And he's gonna tell you that he got it from, I bought you another Call the police. Pen. Again, it's just a single scene, one that I had great fun with, but one that I couldn't really like share with my mom, you know? But definitely, definitely a career highlight for me. Hey, uh, sorry, I was just checking your credit score and I oh, well, got okay. this number that's crazily low, so uh, I'll try again. All right, so this was one of my many one day guest spots. The interesting thing is my hair in this scene has all these blonde highlights. That wasn't for this show, but it was for a movie that I was shooting at the time, the five year engagement, and they had my hair streaked blonde. And then I got the offer to do this show for a day and it somehow worked schedule wise, but I couldn't change my hair. This episode was directed by Peyton Reed, the director of all the Ant-Mans who eventually would meet with me to play Jimmy Woo in Ant-Man and the Wasp. It actually was uh, pretty pivotal in my career because I got to meet Peyton and work with him and, and get along with him. And I think it's a part of the reason why he thought of me for uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. This is a very important show in my career and in my life called Fresh Off the Boat. I think we all kind of play this game where we have to speak Mandarin, and I don't speak Mandarin. Uh, I'm Korean, but I uh, had to learn, and I'm sorry for anyone who does speak Mandarin and knows how much I butchered it, but I thought I did pretty well at the time. And I did have a coach there who was coaching me, who uh, I think uh, was like, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> but it was the best I could do, and I worked really hard at it. You know, I just knew how important the show was, to Asian Americans in particular, but really just to television history, just to be able to be a part of this family on TV was really special, and, uh, and I hold it very near and dear. This really feels like a Bryson article. Yeah, this feels like a me article. I pitched it. This uh, was from the movie Trainwreck, which was shot in New York City. I had such a great time working with Judd Apatow and working with Amy, who I just think is a real talent and an amazing person. You know, I met a lot of friends on this movie. John Glazer, Vanessa Bayer. I got to you know, live in the city and work in the city. And you know, I was born and raised in LA. I still live in LA, so it was very special to me. And then when the movie came out, I just thought it was so good. And it was just so fun to be a part of, even though I don't like looking at myself in it. Yes. I would love to serve you as vice president, oh my God. but I can't. Hmm? I can't. Sorry, I just want to watch this because I hadn't seen it in so long. One of the all-time great comedies, Veep, I played uh, a character named Danny Chung, who was the governor of Minnesota. I was just like, I can't believe I'm in this scene with Julia Louis-Dreyfus. This is like crazy. She's like a hero to me. My whole thing when working with people of her caliber is like, are they gonna be nice? Because they're so like talented and I respect them so much. I kind of don't want to meet them, you know, like because I don't want it to be ruined. And she was so nice and so incredible. And it was such a joy to be on that set. I don't know if there's ever like one thing that kind of changed my life. You know, it was kind of always a slow build over a long period of time. But I will say of all the jobs, the one that kind of where I could feel the, the tide shifting the most was actually V. And I think it was because it was such a respected show to be able to play this kind of swarmy character. I'm really, really thankful to have been on that show. Yeah, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Very cool, very cool. So this 
scene is from Aquaman. It came at the very end of the movie after the credits, leading us to the next movie. It came around the same time as Ant-Man and the Wasp. So it was all kind of happening at the same time. And I was like, wait a minute, can I do both? I really want to do both, but you know, I don't want to have to choose because these are both like so great. And somehow it all worked out and uh, I was able to do both. Granted, the, the, the characters are very different, which was also like exciting to me. In Aquaman, I play Dr. Stephen Shin, who is a character who's also in the comics. He is a marine biologist who is hell-bent on finding Atlantis. It kind of set off this uh, journey into this new universe for me, and I'm very excited for the sequel. It's a trip to be a part of, you know, these huge projects from these comic books that I collected as a kid. It's so crazy to me. Thank you so much to Esquire, and thank you so much for watching me uh, watch myself reluctantly, although I, at times I did get into it. And make sure you check out Blockbuster, streaming now on Netflix. That wasn't as painful as I thought it would be, but yeah, I need to take a break. So.